Okay. This is Call No Other Trophy Club Mutt District Number One. Uh, this is a special meeting, and are we here? All directors are here, so we have a quorum. Okay, give me. Apologize, got to pull up the agenda. And I, I will note that the time is 5.40 p.m. Thank you, Vice President Rose. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to go to... I'm sorry here, wrong agenda. Okay, public comment will be allowed. Okay, um, let's go to citizen comments. Again, I apologize everyone. Uh, this opportunity for citizens to address the board on any matter, whether or not it's posted on the agenda. The board is not permitted to take action on or discuss any comments made to the board at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. The board will hear the comments on this specific agenda item prior to the board addressing those items. You may speak up to four minutes or the time determined by the president or presiding <laughs> officer to speak during the term. You must complete this speaker's, speaker's form that includes the topics of your statement. Citizen comments should be limited to matters of which the board has authority. Uh, are there any citizen comments? I did not receive any. Mike, did you have right. any? No. There's no citizen comments. Right. Thank you. We'll move into regular session. Consider and take appropriate action to adopt Order number 2020-04028, postponing the May 2nd, 2020 uh, director election until the next uniform date occurring on November 3rd, 2020. Uh, staff? This is an order required by um, the counties and the state. And due to COVID, we're allowed to move our May 2nd general election director <coughs> election to um, the November um, 3rd, and um, at that time, those positions would be up for election. All dates would move, the ballot would stay the same. Um, Tony wrote up the order, um, and we need to get that submitted to the counties right away. We already did provide notice that we would be moving our election. There is no one, Denton County is, I think I provided y'all um, an email. Uh, last week or the week prior from Denton County that they would no longer provide any staff or any support for the May election. And um, I know another entity had inquired from um, the company that, that provides the equipment as to the cost and it was up towards $100,000. So we did provide notice to the counties that we in fully intended to move our election to May. I mean to November, sorry. Vice President Rose. I, I move to adopt order number 2020-04028, a postponing the May 2nd. 2020 director election until the next uniform date occurring on November the 3rd, 2020. Second. Okay, we have a motion by, I'm sorry, who's that second? I'm sorry, Steve. Okay. Uh, we have a motion by Vice President Rose to postpone, uh, to adopt order number 2020-04028, postpone the May 2nd, 2020 director election to November 3rd, 2020. And that motion was seconded by Vice uh, Secretary Treasurer Flynn. Are there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by raising your hand. 
I don't see Director Chapman. He's not a. Uh... Yeah, I'm here. He's on there. He's raising. Okay, his there hand. you go. Yeah, you have to say something. <laughs> here I am. On the screen. Okay, there you go. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, <laughs> the next item on the agenda is considering take appropriate action to suspend the disconnection of utility services for non-payment. So at our last meeting, I think there was uniform agreement on the board to suspend payments uh, for non-payment and to suspend disconnect fees uh, during, uh, during this time. I think the area or of concern or disagreement where we couldn't gain consensus was the length of this term. Uh, there was a thought that it should be extended indefinitely until the board takes action. And there was another thought that we put in a cap to suspend it at the end of the, uh, the declarations that have been declared by the various government officials. Uh, so I'll put it out on the floor and uh, let whoever would like to pick it up and run with it. Uh, Secretary Treasurer Flynn. I saw your hand go up. Uh, yeah, I think I think Greg, you captured the discussion uh, perfectly from the last meeting. Since that time, I believe Mike uh, sent out. I think it was Mike um, the order that came from the governor uh, directed at uh, util both utilities and water wastewater. Uh, this was uh, looking when it was dated on March thirteenth. There's a lot of issues, when it comes to water, there's about six or seven bullets out there, if you will. But the key part to me that maybe we wanna talk about is, um, it says accordingly, it is ordered that the governor's disaster direct, it is ordered that this is in place until the governor's disaster declaration is terminated. It, it was okay. signed on the 26th of March as well. I'm sorry, say it again, Director Castanway. It was signed into order on, on March 26th. I have a motion. So even though it was dated the 13th? Uh, Vice President Rose, were you beginning to speak? Yes, I have a motion. That, um, I move to take the following actions in response to the growing COVID-19 threat and the PUC's project number 50664, order dated March 26, 2020. One, ratifying the acting general manager's March 17, 2020 decision to suspend mud disconnects for non-payment. Two, terminate the assessment of late fees on customers for delinquent bills. Three, terminate the application of interest on any deferred payment plans and four, direct that the preceding actions shall continue in force until such time as the Board of Directors directs otherwise. If I get a second, I'll speak to the motion. I'll second. All right, uh, we have a motion as stated by Vice President Rose and seconded by uh, Director Chapman. Okay. Uh, uh, Vice President Rose? Yes. <laughs> what I did is I looked at the, uh, the PUC's project order speaking to the uh, Governor Abbott's declaration of emergency and spoke with the general manager or acting general manager to, to determine those things which are or could be applicable to us. I extracted, the, extracted those out and put those in the motion. Uh, I, I also have gone to the point uh, where we were split before in that I believe the motion should remain in effect or the action should remain in effect until the board of directors directs otherwise. Uh, they can at a future time consider all factors involved and not be tied to some outside agency giving a particular directive. And so that's the reason that I went the direction I went on it. Uh, and uh, I, I think 
uh, this is an aside, this is an operational issue. I think that Greg, you're operating in speaker view. If you go up in the upper right hand corner of your screen, you can go to gallery. If you push on the thing, it's got like uh, nine little white dots and you'll be able to wow. see us and you can see our hands up when we want to talk. Roger that. Thank you. Uh, Secretary Church Flynn. Uh, I, I uh, agree with everything that Bill said. Matter of fact, that's where I started my common uh, comments um, with with uh, relation to five zero uh, order five zero six six four. Um, I again go back to it specifically calls out in there that accordingly it is ordered that until the governor's it, this is ordered until the governor's disaster declaration is terminated. I guess my feeling is if we're going to use this document as our uh, working document, then why would we not use that piece as well as um, our guiding principle, rather than leaving it ended open-ended for a day? Yeah, I guess that's the only point of disagreement that I have with uh, Vice President Rose's uh, motion as well is that the only reason why this is applicable was because, in my mind, it really came about because of the emergency actions that were taken by the government. Uh, if something were to come up to necessitate a change where we needed to do something longer, it only takes a meeting to do it. Uh, so to me, it would only make sense to put a, um, a, a hard stop there if you think about everything we do when we do a motion to spend money, we never leave it open-ended. We always put a not to exceed um, a dollar amount to it. So um, I think it's a, it's a, to me, it's just a way to close the gap for some reason, if something were to happen, um, for whatever reason where the board cannot take action, the, there's a hard stop to this uh, without the board having to come back and call a special meeting to uh, to close this out. Uh, I remember uh, Vice President Rose uh, brought up a issue. We were discussing with something where it appeared that a motion or something was uh, put into place and it didn't appear to have an end date. So there was a question of whether or not uh, it was still applicable to us. By doing something like this puts in a hard end date. So when those parameters end, um, we don't necessarily have to take a action I see Director Castaway has her hand raised. Director Castaway. So on the news this evening on NBC at five o'clock, they had their Fort Worth utilities watered and they brought up this decision. And right now they, um, they're not doing anything with their water people or the water customers that can't pay anything. And they set a hard date of June 1st. So areas around us are, are making this, putting this in place. Yes, I've seen, uh, it's funny, I saw an article by the city of Plano there in the news because they are terminating people for not, uh, for non-payment, which is surprising. Um, seemed like I remember that being in the uh, paper. Vice President Rose? There's, a, there's an interesting, I, I would say an interesting dynamic here in that some of these uh, items that are in this in the uh, PUC order, as I understand it, are relieving the mud of certain actions which would be mandated under the order. Uh, the other part of this equation is the fact that we have, uh, we have certain latitudes within our own abilities. For example, the uh, general, acting general manager's decision to cease disconnects is something that we can do on our own on, on our own volition without going in through state statutes. So it's it's kind of a mixed mixed game here. We could go with if you know if Fort Worth said the first of June, put the order out there till the first of June, then that's a decision that that body's making which may or may not go out to the full extent of what the uh, PUC order is. 
which would leave you the case where you could readdress it either way. I mean, if you put a deadline on it, it's always something that the board can come back and readdress. Secretary Treasurer Fillion. Um, to Bill's point, that's exactly why, again, I say that we should lift from the PUC order, not only the verbiage that Bill spoke to, and that's his motion on the table, but a specific um, uh, clarity about when that ends, and that is when the governor determines that the disaster declaration is terminated. I, in my view, that's the right answer, because that's all of Texas. It's not Fort Worth, it's not Denton or Tarrant County or you know Dallas County. It's, you know, we're following the governor's order. That was another, so I watched the um, meeting from last week that I missed, or last month, and y'all were, it was hard to hear some of you when you lean back in the chairs, by the way, so going forward, if you're going to speak, do speak in the microphone, and Mike is really good about making sure people do that, um, but in saying that as well, I, I do agree with going with what the Texas um, statues are, because even if we did dip, Ditton or Tarrant County, even right now, they both have different limitations on what people can do. So I think going with what Texas is doing is the way to go. So, uh, uh, Mike, I saw you raise your hand. I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you so, want to ask something? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I think Bill and everybody else is trying to get do the same thing. So Bill wanted a meeting for the board to say, we are going to do disconnects again if we leave it to where the state of Texas lifts everything and the board does not want to continue disconnects, we're gonna have the same meetings. I think everybody's pretty much on the same page and if they don't wanna do disconnects at that time, they can call a special meeting and suspend it or you know, depending on the filling of the board, I can also suspend it further. Yeah, so um, I guess are there any other discussion? There's a, a motion on the floor. Vice President Rose. Looking at the motion, uh, oh, can, can I ask you a question? Vice President Rose, would you be willing to uh, amend it to say the latter of Den Collin or the state of Texas? So the latter of the um, the state, county, the state or county, whatever date they set. So it's not, so it wouldn't be an earlier date, but the latest date. So if, let's say if the state of Texas lifted it uh, April 30th, but then county decided to keep it to May 7th, then it would expire on May 7th. So the, the last date that the declaration is issued. Vice President Rose. I don't think we have anything. You're kind of kind of mixing two different things here. Uh, the one is a disaster declaration that goes from the county, and the other one is a disaster declaration or the response from PUC. We're actually tied, as I would see it, under the PUC project order for for the restriction because we can't. Uh, if there are within those statutes certain requirements for us to perform and now due to this PUC order we're relieved of those requirements when the PUC terminates this order those requirements then come back into effect and would then come back on top of us without regard to something that Denton County had done. So we're, ty we're tied okay. up with this. So what I'm looking at is, is amending my motion so that it takes into account the PUC's termination. Is that what, is, uh, if I understand? Yes. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me read just a second. I may do some typing here. Okay, wait a minute. It sounds well, great while, while he's looking at that. It sounds like I was going to provide an amended motion, but Bill's doing it, only adding that last 
verbiage of uh, it, it, the order will stay in place until the governor's disaster declaration is terminated. I think that's probably what Bill is doing. I do want to chime in here while, while Bill's working on that. Uh, the PEC Act, I've got with Mike earlier this week about this. Uh, this is not mandatory that we have to follow this under a certain time frame. It's an exemption allowing us the ability to not do disconnects and not have late fees or any penalties for it. Uh, most of that act uh, and that, that uh, project number is based on a, re a retail. So we fall a little bit different category, um, but it gives us the ability to have exceptions for it. So I don't want anybody to feel that we have to, under a certain guideline, it has to be done until, until they release it. That's just what yeah, we're proposing. I yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any of us feel like we have to do it. I think uh, the board feels that it's a moral obligation to do it. Right. I just wanted to clarify. Appreciate the clarification. Have you uh, worked through it, Vice President Rose? Uh, I'm struggling with one word. What I'm looking at is changing number four, and I wish I could put it up, but we didn't, we didn't get set up so everybody could see it. I'm reworking number four. So right now it says, direct that the preceding action shall continue in force until such time as the PUC terminates the applicable order. And I've got, and the board of directors directs otherwise, but I don't quite think that's the correct verbiage because uh, we don't have authority to override, we don't have authority to override the PUC. Yeah, so why, why wouldn't we just leave it until uh, to the first part and put a period before the AMP. Okay, let's do that. But we and still wouldn't be overriding anything now. No, we wouldn't be overriding anything. It would just end when the PUC order ends. When the governor's de disaster declaration is terminated, correct. Well, no, there's two different things there. Uh, the, you're talking about two different documents. This, this particular document was driven by the governor's declaration order that's correct. The assumption would be that the governor's declaration order would then resend this, which might be true, but it also might be true that the PUC for some time period would leave this into effect after the governor's declaration is removed. And here again, we're tied under the PUC. So that's why I went with the PUC. Can you, could I, I think I understand, Bill, but could you read it one more time? That, that, that I'll, would you like, I'll, I'll read the entire, entire motion. Uh, and if, if, uh, do, 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 do. Can, we, can we do this, Bill? Can we the, retract your first motion and then sure. start over so we don't have to do the, the amendment sure. and all of that? Sure, I'm, I, I would like to remove my original motion. Vice President, I mean, uh, Director Chapman, do you concur? Okay. So that motion is uh, removed. Uh, you have a new motion, Vice President Rose? Yeah, he's, there he goes. Sorry, I was on, he on said mute. It. Yes, I concur. Okay. I read your lips, so I guess it's not acceptable. <laughs> okay, here, here, is, here is the revised motion. I move to take the following actions in response to the growing COVID-19 threat and the PUC's project number 50664, order dated March 26, 2020. One, ratify the acting general manager's March 17, 2020 decision to suspend MUD disconnects for non-payment. Two, terminate the assessment of late fees on customers for delinquent bills. Three, terminate the application of interest on any deferred payment plans. And four, direct that the preceding actions shall continue in force until such time as the PUC terminates the applicable order. We have a motion by Vice President Rose as stated. Do I have a second? I will second that one. Second by Director Chapman. Are there any discussion? Can I discuss and ask one thing, just clarification? Is this going to be all, anything going past further from March 26 on when the 
project from PUC was signed? Any, any prior fees that are already associated in the accounts will still maintain? But I thought Mike, as a uh, Mike, you know, as the as the general manager, already has the wherewithal to make exceptions. So, if anything were, to, if I heard you correctly, Stephen, if anything were to have fallen before the twenty sixth date, um, Mike would have have the authority to address that. Correct? Yeah. If if he's already waived them, uh, this motion is not saying removing his ability to have waived them and saying they go back retroactive and only things starting on the 26th. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking if he's retro waived it. I'm saying if it's, I didn't hear that it had to start on 26 with the motion. That's one thing I was clarifying on. That it doesn't mean we are no longer going to have fees on anybody's account. The way it was, the way I took it. Right. Yeah. That's why I was on clarification. We haven't had anything from the 27th on. Correct. Even, yeah. Okay, any other questions, clarifications? Everyone good? Steven? We're good. All right, uh, hearing no other discussion, all in favor indicate by raise your hand. Oh, I lost you at the end. Yeah. What okay. was the last part? Greg? No, I said, if, I said if there are no other questions, all in favor indicate by raising your hand. We call the vote. Okay. Okay, motion passes unanimously. Okay. I think that was the last order of business. Um, it is 606 and the Trophy Club Mug One special meeting is adjourned at 606. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks I want to apologize to everyone for uh, not being prepared as we come into the meeting. I apologize.